Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's another math video. Welcome to the world of algebra. <laughs> oh, hey, apparently that's what we're doing today. Good old algebra. My goodness, you guys are cruising along through the math world. <laughs> Anyway, let's get started. It's lesson 2.1. We're starting a brand new chapter. Yeah, I'll finish chapter one. Now we're going to be looking at multiplication comparisons. That's right. Multiplication comparisons. That's our topic. And the driving force that lets us know the purpose of why we're learning this comes in our essential question. Essential, because this is the overview of what this lesson is going to teach us. And basically, it says, how can you model multiplication comparisons, which ties in with the topic. So we're going to be comparing, obviously, some things with multiplication. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have coming. It says you could use multiplication to compare amounts. For example, you can think of 15 is equal to 3 times 5 as a comparison in two ways. We have the one way here, which is 15 is three times as many as five. And you can see our model. Yeah, you can see that 15 is three times as much as five, because five times three is 15. We also have that 15 is five times as many as three. So we can kind of think of that too as, okay, 15 is five times as much as three, because three times five is 15. But my friends, you know what's next. You know what Mr. War is going to say. That's right. Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. And that real world problem today is, it says Carly has nine pennies. She's rich. Yeah. Okay. And Jack has four times as many pennies as Carly. How many pennies does Jack have? All right. What a great question. Okay. Now, I know some of you right away are going, I know, I know. Okay, but we're going to slow this process down because we want to do is we want to do some comparison. First off, I mean, just think about the problems is Jack has four times as many pennies as Carly. What does it mean if somebody says they have two times as many? Isn't that just two times? Yeah, we just have two times. So, or maybe double. Hey, I have double what you have, right? Well, how many pieces of candy do you have? Oh, I have eight. Ha, huh. well, I have double. So I have, mm, let me think. Eight times two? Yeah, I have 16, so there, right? <laughs> when you guys go, maybe you go trick-or-treating at Halloween time and you're comparing all your candies. So when we say four times as many, that's really what we're saying. So let's go ahead and take a look at first what it suggests here. It says, what do you need to compare? Well, we need to compare the pennies, right? We need to compare Carly's pennies and Jack's pennies. Let's let's get that in. Cool. Now it says, draw a model and write an equation to solve. And remember the word equation? You guys may have seen it written in, I don't know, I haven't taught third grade in a long time, but third grade might have used this word number sentence, possibly. Somewhere along the line, it switches to this really big word, Ooh, equation. I tend to use the word equation because, well, it's higher level math, and I've taught mostly upper grade math, but equation defines what it is. Number sentence is just a kind of a a cutesy way for you guys to remember what it is, okay? Because it looks like a sentence, so it sounds good. But yeah, the more you can start using equation, yes, the better off you'll be in upper grade math. Here's our model. Well, it shows Carly with one box, and it shows Jack's with four. So we know that Carly has nine pennies, so we can put our nine pennies in there right away. There's our nine. It tells us that in the problem, Carly has nine pennies. That says Jack has four times as many. So we already kind of think of that as times. Well, since this box here models the nine pennies, then that single box we can think of as equal to nine pennies. Therefore, I could put a nine in every one of these boxes to show how many pennies Jack has. Based on that model, the bar model, we don't know how many pennies Jack has, even though I know you guys are doing the math in your head right now. I know, Mr. Moore, I know. Okay, but we're going to pretend that you don't know so we're going to just call those numbers of pennies that Jack has is n. That is just called a variable. Okay, I don't know if they teach this word to you in fourth grade, but I'm just going to give it to you anyway. Okay, it's called a variable. And a variable is just what it kind of sounds like. It can vary because the quantity, we don't know what n is. And that letter is just a symbol to kind of show that unknown quantity. We used to use that little empty box when you guys were in kindergarten and probably first grade. And that little empty box was your variable. Now we come over here, it says record. It says use the model to write an equation and solve. Okay, so here's our n. 
N is what we don't know in the problem. The N is how many pennies does Jack have? That's what the N is. So N is equal to, well, we know Carly has nine, and it says that Jack has four times. Well, times four. And of course, I know you're thinking, oh, I see, I get it. Okay, 36, and so nine times four is 36. So the value of N, we say, is 36. Think. N is how many pennies Jack has. Okay, I don't know why I thought I heard a voice. Okay, so he has 36 pennies. Cool. Oh my goodness, what a pretty problem. I like that. Now let's go into think smarter. Ooh, we're gonna think smarter. It says, explain how the equation for four is two more than two is different from the equation for four is two times as many as two. Man, that is such a great question. Or, yeah, I think it's a question. It doesn't have a question mark, but we have to explain. Definitely a great statement. Now, because we know that two plus two is four, and two times two is four, we have to explain how it's different. So, key word here we have here is the two more than, and then it's different because we have two times as many. This definitely suggests addition over here. So that's one way it's different. This here clearly suggests that it's multiplication. So that's one difference I see and probably the obvious difference. So then I would say the equation uh, two plus two equals four is an additive. An additive is an adjective, an additive comparison because this topic we were looking at, we were comparing. So since comparison is a noun, additive is an adjective. So that's all this is, comes from addition. Whereas two times two equals four is a multiplicative comparison, and that just means multiplication. Okay, again, it's an adjective, and the comparison is the noun, all right? And we know that, right, adjectives, yeah, they modify nouns in English. Okay, so that's the main difference. We finished one page. Ready to go to the next page. Example, it says draw a model and write an equation to solve. It says Miguel has three times as many rabbits as Sarah. Miguel has six rabbits. How many rabbits does Sarah have? It's very similar to the problem we just looked at. So this is our chance to kind of show our understanding. How many rabbits does Miguel have? That's right there in the problem. He has six rabbits. It says how many rabbits does Sarah have? Uh, we don't know. That's the unknown. We don't know that. We'd have to use, to use a variable to represent how many rabbits Sarah has. And I'm writing, ooh, barely got that to fit in there. More than I probably need to, but just for my own clarity. So let's look at the model here. It says, think. You don't know how many rabbits Sarah has. Use N for Sarah's rabbits. Okay, put Miguel on the top because I know that he has altogether, we, we know he has six rabbits. And, but we don't know how many rabbits Sarah has. So really, we don't know what the unit square here equals. And the unit square is being represented by the number of rabbits that Sarah has. We say that it's N because we don't know how many she has. But we do know that Miguel, with his three unit squares, because he has three times as many as Sarah, and if Sarah has N, that would mean that Miguel has three Ns. Okay, and that would be three times as many as Sarah. Total he has is six. So here's the equation over here. We have six equals, well, we have blank, blank. Well, we know that one thing we can put up here is the three because he has three times. Okay, he has six, but he has three times as many as Sarah, and Sarah is being represented as the N right here. So six is gonna equal three times, and then here it says, think, three times what number equals six? I know this is like so easy. It gives us the answer right down below, but it is two. Three times two is six. So therefore, think, and is how many rabbits Sarah has. Okay, so we know that that is going to be two. And it says, so Sarah has two rabbits. Okay, I slowed this down only because this is algebra. Algebra. And even though you're looking at the multiplication equation and you're saying, Mr. War, this is so easy, Remember, we have to be able to set these problems up. I know for a fact that in fifth grade, you're gonna to have to be able to take a word problem and start writing equations for them. So you wanna make sure that you understand the basis, what I was kind of alluding to here with the 
quantity that Sarah has is n, and then Miguel having 3n. See, this problem really could be written as 3n equals 6. This is what you get next year, okay? Because you're going to know that these two mean they're being multiplied to each other. So it's really important that we follow along. All right, cool. Now it says, write an equation or a comparison sentence. Write an equation. 21 is 7 times as many as 3. So very true. So that would mean that 21 is equal to 7 times 3. It could be 3 times 7, right? Now, write a comparison sentence. So here we would have, it's kind of a bizarre sentence. So 8 times as many as 5 is 40. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre because all in words is is always translated into the word as equal sign. And then here you know the times is pretty simple. Cool. All right. Here we go. It's Sharon Show. And that's right. Math board. Get my math board. Yay. Woo. Yeah. Okay. There are eight students in the art club. There are three times as many students in chorus. How many students are in chorus? Wow. See how they're giving us less and less now? We're like kind of almost working on our own now. So if there's eight students in the art club, fair enough. One of these models is going to be represented as the art club and the other one for the chorus, because those are the two things that we're talking about. Now, it does say that the chorus, the students, the number of students in the chorus is three times, and you can see there's three boxes right here. So that kind of almost lets you know that right away, ah, this must be the chorus here, because that single thing that it's being compared to is the art club. So we have the art club here. So what information does it give us? Oh, we have eight students in the art club. Oh, it gives us the eight, just like the other problem. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> yeah, he's a really tough eight. As you can see, he's super thick. There are three times as many students in the chorus. Okay, so that's simple enough because that's one times, two times, three times. We know that the single unit, okay, for this particular problem is eight. And now we don't know what this is, so this is going to be where our n. This looks like the first problem that we had. Now we come over here and it says write an equation and solve. So n is going to be equal to, it looks like we're going to have eight and then times the three because it was three times as many as students in course. Now we have n is going to equal 24. Now the value of n is 24. A lot of repeating. So there are 24 students in chorus. Okay. Oh my goodness. I think that's it. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, what a great video. Oh, I like that video. I can't wait for the next one. Hey. It's an honor having you guys along. Fourth graders, you guys totally rock. You're going to do awesome now.